The purpose of this NAT 1780 screencast is to introduce process flow diagrams. We're going to focus attention on the earliest parts of the origin and evolution of Earth's atmosphere in uh, this particular treatment and we're going to go ahead and uh, start off by drawing our first part of the um, of the process flow diagram. We'll choose a uh, brown ink here and we'll start off by drawing the, uh, the lithosphere here and I'll just short form that as lith for lithosphere so basically what I'm talking about here is the um, essentially Earth's crust and that's a bit of a simplification but it'll work for our purposes today and we'll assume that Earth's crust is the source of volcanic eruptions. So during the Hadean uh, eon, this period of about 3.8 to 4.6 billion years ago, there was uh, extremely, uh, um, if you like, um, excessive uh, uh, volcanic activity taking place, and that volcanic activity ejected various uh, components, gases, uh, volcanic ash, that kind of thing, into Earth's atmosphere. So from the perspective of our uh, source process sink uh, kind of analysis here, or this approach to doing uh, systems thinking, volcanic eruptions at the, the surface of the planet, originating from, uh, if you like, uh, within and below the, uh, the lithosphere of the planet, the uh, Earth's interior, uh, resulted in the introduction or the injection as I've called it in other places the injection of uh, gases into uh, Earth's atmosphere so uh, to, to just round out our complete source process sink uh, story here we have volcanic injection as the the process that uh, resulted in a number of gases uh, being transferred from the inside of the earth uh, into the uh, the atmosphere. Uh, gases like uh, uh, H2O in the vapor phase, uh, carbon dioxide, some nitrogen, uh, some sulfur compounds like uh, sulfur dioxide and uh, H2S and so on. These are, this is the, uh, I've been calling this elsewhere, the, the kind of the cocktail of gases that get uh, emitted um, from volcanoes and uh, make their way into the atmosphere. And uh, the other thing that you'll notice in um, essentially uh, some of the other materials I've provided is that I refer to this as the non-cloud atmosphere. And herein lies one of the reasons why I find it convenient to just make a distinction between a non-cloud atmosphere and a cloud atmosphere. Let's uh, now go ahead and introduce a cloud component. So back in this um, period of time, the uh, early kind of um, days for Earth, so here's our cloud atmosphere. Uh, we basically just have a single layer so we've got a fairly simple atmosphere. There is no um, you know uh, typical structure of a troposphere and a stratosphere and so on to uh, to speak of. We really just have a, a single layer uh, atmosphere. So now uh, what I want to show in this next uh, process flow is um, what uh, might happen to one of the components that was injected into the non-cloud atmosphere uh, by the eruption of, um, of uh, one or more by, by, by various volcanic activity. Let's just leave it at that. So one of the components that ends up uh, actually making clouds is of course H2O. So we need to have a process that can take H2O in its vapor phase over here in uh, the, uh, the source uh, the atmosphere, the non-cloud atmosphere, uh, into its uh, sink or destination location, the so-called uh, cloud uh, part of the atmosphere. So since we're making the transition, uh, transition purely in the system H2O from the vapor phase 
in the non-cloud atmosphere to uh, in fact the liquid phase over here in the um, in the cloud atmosphere we need a process that would account for that and of course the process the phase change process in the system H2O that accounts for that is the process known as condensation so if we condense from the vapor phase over here in the uh, the non-cloud atmosphere so we take water vapor and we condense it we will produce H2O in the liquid phase so in fact um, perhaps just to make this even more clear hopefully more clear let's write this up here H2O gas phase over here and then H2O in the liquid phase over here so we have condensation as the phase change process that facilitates the um, the transfer of uh, H2O from the non-cloud atmosphere to the uh, to the cloud atmosphere. Now um, another component that we've added in uh, this uh, system is of course um, the uh, we've included the hydrosphere. So let me add on the uh, a, a block over here for the hydrosphere and again just for the purpose of simplicity I'll just abbreviate that as hydrosphere so how do you get H2O from some other part of this system into the hydrosphere well one way is when you have clouds through the uh, through the process of precipitation you can certainly get H2O from clouds into the, uh, the hydrosphere. So in this case clouds are the source of H2O and in fact um, the, uh, the hydrosphere turns out to be uh, the sink or the, uh, the destination for the H2O. So the, uh, the process that achieves this is of course precipitation. Okay, so uh, these are the kinds of uh, things that I'm uh, asking you to do in the first lab where I ask you to look at process flow uh, diagrams. In every one of these cases we have a, a source, a process, and a sink. So just to recap, in, uh, at the beginning here we had a volcano that is erupting, so the lithosphere shown here at the bottom that turns out to be the uh, the source of the volcanic eruptions and through the process of injection various gases are uh, introduced into the non-cloud part of the atmosphere Uh, those gases, once they're in the non-clouded part of the atmosphere, uh, of course, can undergo uh, various other um, transfers, if you like. But, of course, in each case, you have to have a, uh, a process that allows for this. So here I'm showing one example through the, um, through the process of uh, condensation. We can extract water vapor from the non-cloud atmosphere and transfer it over to the uh, the cloud component of the atmosphere so in this kind of a scenario the non uh, cloud component of the atmosphere is the source the cloud component of the atmosphere is the sink and condensation is the process so we have a source process sink triple that uh, we can consider here let me just clean this up a bit. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that's really the kind of thing uh, that I'm expecting you to do in uh, in lab one, as I say. And of course, just keep in mind that um, there are various. Uh, uh, you, you'll know when you're things are complete when you've um, exhausted the possibilities for the uh, the potential transfers that might uh, actually take place of course it is entirely possible for example that we have uh, precipitation occurring 
with the source being uh, the cloud parts of the atmosphere and that precipitation falling on the surface of the planet. So uh, precipitation could also be uh, producing uh, uh, an input for the, uh, the surface of the planet as well. And maybe I'll just write that as precip. There we go. That's a little better. So uh, there are various uh, possibilities here and uh, lab one just uh, encourages you to investigate that. So it's systems thinking, it's decomposing complex uh, systems and accounting for transfers of, um, of, of matter uh, from one place to another, from a source to a sink through some uh, acceptable process. And uh, with that, I shall end this particular screencast.